Ahoy there, friends! In the previous episode, we set sail from the north of Italy on our longest ever passage to the French island of Corsica. We passed right next to the church in which we got married and then headed out to sea on our first ever night passage, which was very, very dark. As a result of this, it was quite a tense night, but as soon as the sun rose, we absolutely loved the rest of the passage. Seeing our first foreign country appear on the horizon was a magical moment for us. And then when we arrived, the anchorage that awaited us was far more beautiful than it looked on the chart. We watched the sunset from the bow and then spent our first night at anchor in Corsica. That's where we left off. We both slept really well on our first night at anchor and it also helps that the wind was easterly so the sea was flat calm in our anchorage. The following day we marvelled at the clarity of the water and we spent all day relaxing and taking things very easy. We also found the time to do some monkeying around. We couldn't hang around too long though as there were strong winds forecast so we had to move south into the protection of the Bay of St Florent. The day started out beautifully. It was sunny, there was wind and we were able to make our way south under sail while looking at the beautiful scenery. Later on the wind dropped down so we started to motor towards the bay. Changeable winds were the order of the day, and although it seems impossible looking at this footage now, about one hour after this was taken, we got hit by some catabatic winds coming down from the mountains, and the wind speed went from zero knots to around 30 knots almost instantly. The boat started to heel over to about 15 degrees as we motored along, and then a little bit later on, as quickly as this wind appeared, it went away again and we were left with calm conditions. Because of this, this was another memorable passage. It suddenly dawned on me that we didn't have much daylight left and maybe it was time to get a move on. If any of you are interested in marine weather forecasting, you may have noticed the cirrus clouds there above the mountains. These often appear before a warm front and on this occasion they were indicative of the bad weather and strong winds which were approaching. We then had the biggest test yet for our anchor. I laid out 40 metres of chain in 6 metres of water depth and we then played a waiting game. How strong was the wind going to be and would the anchor hold or would it start to drag? Only time would tell. Regardless of what happened with the anchor, we knew we weren't going to be able to go ashore anytime soon anyway. I'd only just built our tender and we still didn't have an outboard engine for it so we had to row everywhere. We didn't have experience of doing this so until we got some confidence we were only willing to set off in nice calm conditions as we didn't want to be blown out to sea. We spent the next couple of days cooped up aboard the boat, unable to go ashore, and I let out a further 10 metres of chain on the anchor as the winds increased. In the end we had up to 43 knots of wind. Eventually the wind died down and we were able to launch our tender and row ashore. On the plus side we were sure that the anchor was well dug in and that it wouldn't drag while we were away from the boat. St Florence is a pretty little town and we had a great time exploring it on foot. Corsica is a really interesting place with a very rich history. Over the years it's been influenced by many cultures including the ancient Greeks, the Romans, the Moors, Genoans and even Barbary pirates. As a result of this it's a real melting pot of cultures and it's a really interesting place to visit.
One of the highlights for us was the Genoese Citadel, which was constructed in 1440. We spent a couple of hours wandering around it, marvelling at the beautiful views from the top of this defensive position. Places like this really do make you feel like you've stepped back in time. We could also see our boat anchored in the bay, which for us was the cherry on the cake. We then walked back into the town and saw some of the local curiosities, such as men playing bulls and the local market, which appeared to sell a little bit of everything, including old flintlock pistols. After walking around for hours, we stopped off in a cafe so that we could get a nice crepe and more importantly, some free Wi-Fi so that we could check the weather forecast. Then it was time to head back to the boat. We eventually got back to our boat and then spent a nice calm night at anchor. The following day was sunny so we relaxed in the cockpit and in the afternoon a skipper from a neighbouring boat came over in his dinghy and invited us aboard their boat for some drinks. The couple on board seemed quite impressed that we'd stayed out at anchor during the storm as they had taken shelter in the marina. We couldn't deny that it had been a little bit stressful lying at anchor in 43 knots of wind. However, we now had full confidence in our anchoring system and this meant that we would sleep soundly at anchor for the rest of our trip. That evening we watched a gorgeous sunset from the cockpit of the boat and there was a paraglider in the sky which seemed to only add to the magical atmosphere. We watched the rest of the sunset and then as it got colder we brought some blankets out and lay down in the cockpit looking up at the stars. In the background I put on the song A Sky Full of Stars from Coldplay and every time I hear that song now it takes me right back to that moment. The next day we weighed anchor and headed towards the beautiful Loto Beach. This is a very peaceful place because unless you're riding by water the only other way to get here is to hire a 4x4 and drive through a desert. As soon as we arrived we saw why you would go to so much effort to get here. The water looked more like a swimming pool than the sea and within about 60 seconds of being anchored I was in the drink enjoying the most turquoise water that I've ever seen. Later that night we watched another gorgeous sunset and then spent the night at anchor. The next day we rowed ashore and left our tender on this deserted little beach while we explored on foot. We climbed a hill and found that we had a 360 degree view of our surroundings.
The weather wasn't perfect, but I was having such a good time that I couldn't help but break out into a little happy dance. We descended from the hill and then walked west along the beach and a little bit into the interior, which was a nice day out. We explored the whole area and then headed back towards the boat. As always, it was a relief to find the tender sitting on the beach waiting for us when we got back. We spent the night at anchor through a thunderstorm. And the next day woke up to the sunshine and chose the next beautiful beach on the map. And as if by magic, we found ourselves another beautiful anchorage. We took our trusty folding tender, which felt more and more like our car each day, and rowed ashore to explore the beach. Let's just say we weren't disappointed. We went for a walk inland into some woods, but we didn't stay there very long because the beach was so spectacular we just had to get back onto it. At the end of the day we rode back home and enjoyed a sundowner while we watched the sunset. So far we'd had a perfect honeymoon, but it couldn't all be plain sailing, could it? Mm -hmm.